Hey, Laura, thank you so much for doing the show. You're welcome. Right on. So tell us about your area. I live in uh, Alabama on the beautiful Gulf Coast, white sandy beaches. We have Dolphin Island, Gulf Shores, Orange Beach. Roll Tide. Well, I didn't go there, but uh, <laughs> I can't go one way or the other. <laughs> okay, right on. Um, so how long have you lived in that area? I was born and raised in Mobile, and um, I'm from this area. Okay, fantastic. Um, how long have you been in vacation rentals? I started in 2007 with my own company with one property. I grew it up until 2018 when Vacasa Vacation Rentals purchased my company as their first acquisition in Alabama. And oh, wow. Cool. Mm -hmm. And you've been liking them? I've loved it. Um, part of it's, I'm not on a, my acquisition contract. They asked me to stay for three months as part of the sale of my company. Uh, they liked me. I liked them. And I, it's been a great relationship. It's been fun to be on the ground up on a vacation company that's a worldwide entity. Yeah, they're huge. Um, and people don't know about them yet, but they are monster, monster huge. And right on. We have 23,000 worldwide and growing um, monthly. I mean, every day it changes and looking to go IPO in the future. Okay, cool. So now tell us about your area. Well, most people come to the area for the beautiful white sandy beaches. We attract more family-friendly atmosphere. Um, there's two different sections. Uh, Dolphin Island has the more small town feel to it. It has mostly beaches. There are a few condo complexes, but it's mostly beaches and big family homes. And families have owned them for years, or there's some that buy them for investments. And you can walk all around, ride your bike. There's world-class fishing. And... As far as Dolphin Island goes, there's it's for the first pet friendly beach for renters. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so it's kind of it was similar to Mexico Beach, which was decimated by Hurricane Michael. So a lot of guests that used to go there tend to kind of flop back to Dolphin Island. Um, it's kind of that small town homey feel. There's no uh, commercialization on the island. Then Gulf Shores Orange Beach is a little more commercialized. It's still very family friendly, very much fishing oriented, but there's a, a lot more restaurants and uh, things to do. And it's very condo heavy. There's a ton of beautiful homes that rent very, very well. And, but there, it is mostly condos that line the beach and those are what most investors are investing in. And condos, they let them do uh, short term rentals there, huh? Yes, there are some rental restrictions on um, certain homes and areas not directly on the beach. And that's where you have to kind of work with your realtor or work with myself and make sure you're not buying something that's rent restrictive if your idea is to buy an investment property. Absolutely. People pay attention to that. Just don't rush into something. Get somebody who knows the situation um, because that happens a ton. People think, oh, I'll just do this and you can't do this. And sometimes also we know like which properties are about to vote to change. And so you may buy something and it was originally a short term rental, but in a week or a month or six months, it's going to long term. And that's not what you bought and you were going to make more money as a short term rental. And now you're stuck and you got to flip it to get something else. Right on. So you were born and raised in Mobile. Um, how do you like the smaller uh, community? So... It's a great, I mean, the atmosphere down here is a great town. They obviously were dri driven by tourism dollars. So uh, we get to benefit from all the perks that that comes with. Obviously, a little bit of traffic during the peak season, but the benefits outweigh that. Well, and when you say traffic, it's because there's smaller roads probably. Um, they've done a really good job of trying to add more, but it's still an island. I mean, when you come over the bridge, you're still on an island. And so there's only so many ways to funnel people that are coming and flocking. You know, Fourth of July, of course, is going to be a lot busier than, say, right now. But, I mean, you're in a beautiful area. You see white sandy beaches every day, and you can't really beat that. Friendly people. Wow. Okay, so now let's get into some real estate. Um, so what would a... What's the like median price for someone who wanted to invest down there? I would say about, you know, three, three fifty would probably be the medium. Um, you have a lot of stuff that is 
you do have several properties in like the two to 200 range. And then you've got a lot that are about the half a million dollar range. And it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, obviously if you're a real investor, you know, you're not going to make money off of just having one property. You, you've got to have it like five to 10 for it to be really making real money. And okay. some people like to diversify. Some like to, you know, stick in the average, some like to get some that are yeah, a little bit lesser tier and then some a little bit higher tier and let them all kind of work together. All right. Fantastic. And that, is that what most of your clients do? They have uh, several properties out there? I would say the majority probably only have one and then they realize, you know, I have to make more money to, you know, some just do the one and they rent it around, but then the real investors end up realizing they need multiple ones in order to make it a worthwhile venture. And so they end up buying and some will just stick with all high end, some will stick with all low end, but a lot of them have started diversifying. Like I'll have some one bedrooms, I'll have some two bedrooms, I'll have some three bedrooms and, you know, in a variety of different tiers. Okay, so since beach is such a big pull there, um, we'll start with a condo. If you wanted to be um, in a condo on the beach, uh, how much would you be talking? Like say a two bedroom, two bath. Um, there are some low ones that you can get in the two to 250 range, um, but those are gonna be, yeah, um, down Fort Morgan Road and that kind of, and they're going to be older buildings. You're not going to get a brand new building at that rate. Um, you're going to go, but that that's the range. It starts about there and they can go up to half a million for a two, two. And it depends on what you want as far as the biggest thing to look for is return on investment, basically what it can get. And that's where I come in and help give them no projections. And there's different things in each building, you know, view, size of the room, how many it sleeps, beds and bath size, uh, amenities for the complex. And another uh, thing people need to look at is whether or not the complex has been assessed and what the assessments have been. I.e., if they just put a new roof on it last year, they're obviously not going to be putting a roof for a while, so you're not going to be assessed for that in the coming up years. You know, and people, that's a huge deal right there. I bought a house in um, Miami uh, like a week before Katrina, and my HOA was two twenty-five and went to seven fifty, and so that's a uh, those assessments are a big deal. Um, speaking of those, uh, we call them uh, homeowner association fees. Mm -hmm. um, what's the range like from the 200 to the 500? I'm sure there's all kind of different prices. That is really all over the place. And I mean, literally all over the place. It can be from three to 500 a month to over a thousand a month. And it really depends on the complex and what amenities they are and who's running the HOA. Um, and then that's also where the assessments come in because some complexes will keep their HOA fees low, but then they assess you every year. And then others try not to assess you and have a little bit higher fee. So some of that's things to definitely look into. And you can always ask for to look into the reserve and the numbers of the complex. Okay. So now um, take that $500,000 condo you were just talking about. Okay. What kind of rent could somebody get for that? And like, and since it's short term, we'll go like on a nightly basis. So um, we look at more of the gross yearly income. So there's some that are about half a million um, that are on the beach with high end amenities. And those gross close to 100,000. I mean, you can get some from like 75 to 90,000 if it's one of the top tier complexes. Wow. Um, with you know lazy rivers and hot tubs and indoor pools and outdoor pools and on the beach the more it is and obviously it depends on where you are in the building and your view obviously if you're a corner unit you're going to make more than say maybe lowest floor looking out barely at the sand if you're uh and also how well it's decorated and you don't have to spend a lot to make it look updated and nice. You don't have to go out and spend a ton, but if you're gonna be in a half a million con dollar condo, you don't need, or a million or whatever, you don't need to make it look like, you can go buy rooms to go, but it doesn't need to look like it's rooms to go, if that makes sense. You know, you've got yeah. to make it look updated. And that's sometimes where it does help to either, if you don't have an eye for it, to get a decorator and make it functional, because it's not only just looking updated, but make it functional for guests. Okay. So now um, let's go to houses. Um, okay. And I'm assuming you could get into the millions very easily if you're on the water. Yes, yeah, so in Dolphin Island, there's still half a million or below and those gross in the 75 to 90 
um, that numbers are continuing to push up a little bit. Um, in Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, those houses are well over a million, some as much as two or three. Um, they do rent well, the ones on the beach. I mean, you're looking at, if they're large enough, 150 to 200K gross income. Um, they are very, very popular. They rent mostly weekly in the summer and then they're popular year round. I mean, people want to, you're usually looking at three generations of people staying there. Now, are those the kind of uh, properties that are built up? So, yes. oh, our building okay. codes require you to be on stilts because of, uh, you know, hurricane storm surge. Sure. That's cool. Yeah. I, um, we don't do it that much out here. Okay. Yeah. It's um, most every house will be built on stilts. And then, you know, some houses have hot tubs or or pet friendly or pools. And that's different things that can help bring more value to your. Uh, house obviously the more you sleep and the more you can make it where it's uh attractive versus going to a condo complex with amenities so if you put a hot tub or you put a pool or you make it pet friendly that's something that you might not be able to have at a condo complex and then people will pay more for less if they can bring their pet and as you know millennials mostly pet travel with our pets <laughs> well i mean out and out in california i mean it's People who try to rent a place, whether it be short term or long term, are shooting themselves in the foot if they say people can't bring their dogs. That's, I mean, that's how the houses are. Most of the condo complexes here are no pets for renters um, based on the HOA rules. And I get that. You've got a small, there's only like one or two that allow it. And they're usually uh, weight restricted because you have small elevator spaces and you just, you don't need all those animals. But at a house, yes, it definitely, we have studies that it brings up we say at least 15% more income. It can be even more just depending on the location and what other amenities the house has to offer, but it's definitely a perk. And I know a lot of people click that box. And if you click that box that says pet friendly and yours isn't pet friendly, I guess just a whole host of people you're not advertising to. Oh, people would rather leave their kids. than They would. Hugs. <laughs> They would, plus, you know, <laughs> pets would do a lot less damage than children. <laughs> so now since they're bringing their pets, they're probably driving. Where are most of your uh, renters coming from? I would say prior to the oil spill, which the oil spill was in 2010, um, we had a kind of a shorter driving radius. We had a lot of Mississippi, Louisiana, you know, rest of Alabama, maybe some Tennessee. And then in the winter, we'd have, you know, winter guests from Michigan or uh, Wisconsin, Indiana. Since the oil spill, it really got us put on the map. Um, well, it really wasn't bad here. Um, the It really got a lot of, I guess, no bad advertising is still good advertising. So we got really put on the map and people saw how pretty our beaches were. And the driving radius has really increased. We started seeing a lot more from Texas and Missouri and on up Tennessee, Kentucky, regularly people coming from Indiana, all the um, states up in that area. So we're really, really a long driving radius. And I mean, we still see guests that come in, you know, even from your area, California, or I've had an owner from Hawaii. So it really, it's become a really unique thing. And with our company being based out of Portland, Oregon and Boise, Idaho, we fly people in all the time and they're amazed at how hospitable the people are here and how beautiful the beaches are. And it's a little more affordable for an investor than say maybe your area like San Diego. I mean, the cost of living down here is less and so it's a little bit different atmosphere. No, and people are um, taking their money out of California uh, for because it's such a, it's such a long-term thing, you know, you're, you're banking on appreciation usually as opposed to banking on money right now. And then for short-term rentals, they're clamping down, at least here in San Diego, where, you know, a lot of the neighborhoods aren't wanting people to do that. And a lot of big cities are. Um, I mean, we are, I mean, Baldwin County is the county we're in in Alabama and Mayville County is where Dolphin Island is. And those tourism dollars are, we're dependent on them. So there are areas and neighborhoods that are, you know, rent restrictive in that area, but they're not a lot. And those are just the regular neighborhoods. They're not the beachfront properties. So. Wow. Okay. Um, so now we went through all the different types of uh, you. I mean, in San Diego, the median home price is 590. You kind mm -hmm. of covered that. 
Um, what are some up and coming areas? Uh, ours is still up and coming. Um, all three of the areas I mentioned was listed on Vacasa's top 25 places to invest. Um, so, and if I remember correctly, they were all in the top 20. So they were um, definitely good places to come and invest. And it's hard to say, it's more looking at ROI at the end of the day on which one would make someone's best decision. I mean, some people may, you, if you're just strictly investment, then you look on the return on investment based on what you're buying. And sometimes you can take into effect like this one, is going to return this if I just put this much money into it, and that might be a better deal than finding one that's already updated. And is that what Vacasa is basing uh, the rankings on? Is straight returns or hospitality or you know cool people? What are they basing it all on? Cap rates. They're basing cap it on rates. Cap rates. Mm -hmm. It's one hundred percent on cap rates. Okay, cool. Um, and so. Vacation homes are such a cool thing. My sister has some. We used to have some in the family. Um, and my sister uses Vacasa up in Big or, uh, Lake Arrowhead. But um, are, are a lot of your owners using the properties for their own use also? We have mixed bags. Some owners are strictly investment properties. They never come and, you know, rely on us 100% to take care of the property. Uh, report anything done, take, you know, handle it, everything. Um, a lot of people, and mostly on the homes, some of them have been family homes forever. They use it a couple weeks out of the year or maybe a month or whatever. And then the rest of the time is to rent it. And you have, everybody has different needs or wants. You have the people that are strict investors. You have the people that have owned it. They realize they're not going to use it as much as they thought and rent around their usage. And then um, you've got the ones that inherited it and it's been in the family forever. And so let's rent it some, we're going to take our weeks and go from there. Okay. Um, and so now what are, what are the most popular areas within your area that, um, that people are going after? Investors. As far as buyers or renters? Investors. Yes. Um, I would say it's it's really dependent upon what they're looking for. The ones that are looking for multiple properties sometimes either do several one bedroom condos or they'll do a mixture of one, two and three bedroom condos. And some will try to, I started seeing a lot trying to diversify between the cities. Used to everybody try to stay in one thing. So if they're buying in Orange Beach, they're only buying in Orange Beach. Or if they're buying Gulf Shores, only in Gulf Shores or in Dolphin Island, only in Dolphin Island. Sometimes yeah, now they're, yeah, so I'm starting to see them kind of move through the different cities. Or since Vacasa is worldwide, I've seen some do buy down here and then buy up in our Tennessee, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge area. So basically have a mountain home and have a vacation home. So you're, you have one company managing it, but your eggs aren't in one, that one market per se. Okay. So now are you seeing uh, rental increases? We have. So when I sold my company um, in 2018, of course, I felt like I did a decent job and my owners did, but I sold with 76 owners. Um, I haven't looked at the data today, but as of August, 80% were still in the program with the same owners, same units, you know, people buy and sell and all that stuff. A hundred percent of those had received more money uh, year over year than they, they did under me. And we are seeing some numbers just take off, but everybody, it, the numbers have been really astounding over the last year. And we don't, short of any of the dreadful storms, we don't foresee anything changing on that. People are flocking to our area. Uh, we're staying busy right now, which is considered the off season. We have some owners that are static that they're having rentals in November. Thanksgiving will be busy down here. <laughs> okay. Now, what are there things you can track of why some properties are going up through the roof now? Or um... some of it's own, um, some of it's owner going in and updating the biggest okay. thing is to stay with the trends if you're going to want to think about it when someone goes online they look at the different ways of filtering they go and filter their dates they filter by bedrooms and baths how many people they want to sleep if they want beachfront if they want a beach view if they want pet friendly whatever and then whatever is left is what's open well how what are they going to pick yours over the next one a house is sometimes have unique qualities but if it's a condo complex 
I mean, those four walls, I mean, it comes down to your decor and that's, you know, pretty much. What do you feel like the best bang for people's buck is like is remodeling a kitchen uh, worth the money um, or is like, can you get away with paint and what, what do you feel like the best bang for the buck is for people? It depends on the unit. Um, obviously, if you only have a little bit of money to spend and you don't know what to spend it on, make sure if your balcony overlooks the beach, make sure that that's comfortable and has plenty of seating because people look at that. Um, if you're going inside, do you want the walls to look fresh? If it's all scuffed up, then that may be better than updating the kitchen because you can maybe just paint the cabinets in the meantime or something like that until you're ready to rip out the cabinets and rip out and put in new countertops and to that extent. Um, updated artwork can always do it. You don't have to go super expensive. It's something that looks nice and modern. And in a bedroom, you just change out a comforter set and that completely changes the room. Wow, so people can really update and get their situ get their dollars up for not putting too much money into it. No, uh, uh I mean, there's some units that, I mean, you could go overboard, don't get me wrong, but you can probably update for five to 7,000, something that may look dumpy now, and then you get a better return on investment. And sometimes you can use that as leverage to get the sales price down. All right, cool. Um, anything else you want to tell us about your area? We have a beautiful area and it's a great place to invest. So if anybody- I'm going to come visit you. Come I'm visit. Come visit. I'm absolutely. Come rent through Vacasa. Come visit. We'll help you buy some uh, properties. We'll hook you up with some agents in the area. And uh, and I'm that's where I help. I go and work with the agents and with the buyers and help, help them from the rental perspective. Okay, so now, and then you match, like, okay, this is the price of the property. This is how much rent you can get. This is a good deal or this isn't a good deal, sort of? Yeah, I lay out, so a lot of times investors will run down and come to, um, I'm between this complex and this complex, and I give them the pros and the cons. So this one versus this one, and based on what links they send me and what needs to be updated versus, well, you can get this one at a lower price probably, and this is your return and versus this one over time. And then you kind of have to look at what the HOA is doing as far as association fees. How many clients do you have that just want to subsidize their payment and they want to use it a lot themselves? There's a good, there's a vast majority that are that I would say we're probably like half investors, half just want to do that. We have some owners that rent through peak season and then in the off season stay in their unit for two, three, four months. Um, yeah. So, you know, kind of like a snowbird type situation. They bought it to come winter there and then rent it and it pays for itself through the summer. We have some owners that you know, every month they stay a week, but that was it. So they might as well have something to cover their HOA dues, the insurance, the taxes, and it's never good for property to sit anyway. No, no. All right. Well, um, Laura, anything else before we go? No, I appreciate you inviting me on and please, you know, come to our area, contact me, Laura Hancock at Vacasa. So we'd love to um, see anybody and everybody and show our beautiful area. Right on. Well, Laura, thank you so, so much for taking time to do this. Um, you've been fantastic. Thank you. And if I can ever be of any help, let me know. I absolutely will.